This has to be one of the most toxic builds in Warcraft Rumble. I'll be very honest with you, I'm still working on this build and it's already disgustingly powerful. After you get the trait for Necromancer where they can summon mages instead of skeleton warriors, and you get the trait for Baron Riverdale where he also summons skeleton mages, these two combined gives you so much pressure and what makes it even better is the fact that these skeleton mages don't really get affected by this dragon AoE tower that we currently have in the meta. They literally can tank that fire like it's nothing and keep blasting away. So the enemy has to keep them in check or they will be easily GG'd. And as you can see, we're going to be easily able to clear this wave that the enemy pushed because they spent a lot of resources trying to collect those chests and it all failed and backfired on them. We also have a really effective way of destroying our enemy with the safe pilot as the safe pilot and Huntress is top tier in my personal opinion, probably S tier minis. You can drop the safe pilot behind the enemy turret and it's just going to keep blasting away doing damage and having Blizzard is fantastic. Obviously, if you want a specific trait for Blizzard, I would choose the one that freezes your targets when they're being hit by it. Now, as you can see, Baron Riveter going up there, he's going to get blasted. Hopefully he has enough health left to get rid of her before he gets blasted away. And that works out fantastic. Dropping the Prowler. I really like the speed that the Prowler brings compared to the Quillbore. But again, that's just my personal preference. Now, as you can see, I did drop the safe pilot up on the right left hand corner. Sorry. And she's blasting away. And now we have overwhelmed our enemy here. There's nothing he can really play from what I've seen in his kit that's going to allow him to really counter this. And as you can see, I'm playing Blizzard for more damage those eggs now if he had the talent for those eggs that might have made a big difference where they explode and release lava doing damage to your enemy units and this should be gg nearly 60 second wins here it's fantastic i will make a video in the future probably covering the full build guide what you need because i'm still working on it myself i know right now what would really help this build is if you get stealth for your huntress and stealth for your safe pilot so when they land or played they're instantly stealth and then they ambush your enemy so we're going up here against another bearing riven there so as the match starts, what I'm really doing right now is analyzing the deck he has so I can see how I can specifically counter it. Like he has the Dark Spirit Troll, he also has a very interesting set of Murlocs and Gargoyles. Now I'm pretty sure it's not really going to be too big of a deal for me as my Necromancer should more than be able to take those guys out, having the Blizzard there and just sending in units towards his base. Now I do need to make sure I counter the pressure of the Gargoyle or the Gargoyle will destroy me. He also has Shaman, quite interesting indeed. It's not what I expected, but I should be able to counter this no problem i have a mass contingent coming out there and with necromancer up with those extra skeleton mages he can rarely do anything that's going to be able to destroy me unless it's mass aoe or his safe pilot we have baron river there going to tank for that set he does use polymorph his whole entire deck seems to be very well suited to countering certain playstyles, but not this one right now. And with him not really being able to counter my units is going to cost them since you could already see he's at half health and that safe pilot is going blasting away. So I'm just going to drop Blizzard here to add that extra damage. He does summon his Baron Riven there, but my mages are making their way with the Necromancer and they're continuing to add pressure. This is why this has to be one of the most toxic builds in Warcraft Rumble currently. I'm expecting a nerf for this. If this doesn't get nerfed eventually, then it's going to be a real problem. I can't even believe the power that pay to win players probably have with this. Now, obviously, if his Dark Spirit Troll had that healing, that would make a big difference. But right now, there's nothing he can do. We're coming down really hot right here. And my Huntress destroying Baron Riven there from the top part of that bridge. I only placed those skeletons, so they would basically keep him in that position for her to do damage. And the Blizzard comes out with the safe pilot and the mages doing some nice little frost bolts giving us the victory we actually wanted right here. I'm showcasing the strength of this build, and I know a lot of people have been messaging me talking about, it's ridiculously strong. Why is it not nerfed yet? I have no idea, but I'm enjoying every moment of it while it's here. Now that Dark Spirit Troll has one of his talents. I think it's the one that heals, I'm not sure. I really have all the stars needed for him. It's just surprisingly that it never shows up in the shop for me, the Prowler. And this is why I like the Prowler compared to the Quillbore. The Quillbore may be tanky, now, don't get me wrong. However, the charge you get from the Prowler is insane. We're doing some nice damage with the safe pilot up there in the left-hand corner. He uses his. Will we be able to eliminate it? Probably not. Because of that stealth, that actually saves it. But these two Frost Mages. Now, note that these skeletons continue to spawn periodically from my bases, which is ridiculously pressuring my enemy. Who is Jaina Proudmoore, by the way? One of the best characters in Warcraft. Now... We're going to drop the skeletons there to tank for my Huntress and we're going to go straight down the middle with Prowler and collect those chests. Hopefully my Quillbore will be enough to collect those mines once my enemy doesn't counter it and it looks fantastic for me. So we're dropping the safe pilot there as he has to now figure out how to counter this. 
or simply give up. We're about to find out what he's going to do, dropping the Necromancer there. So another contingent goes down. If you notice, I really do choose to make sure they go on top of the bridge so I could always slow down my enemies. And we GG it there with the added blizzard damage, even though I didn't need to, which works out fantastic for us. Now we're going into game four here, Baby Shark, who is playing one of my favorite commanders. Actually, you know what? He is my favorite commander, Murkai, right now. Murkai is so much fun. My second is Hogger. I really enjoy playing Hogger. Baron Rivalier for sure is definitely my third. I don't know why he's not my first. He just doesn't, I don't know, he doesn't fit my personality as well. So we're going in there to collect with the Cobalt on the right hand side. The only reason I didn't place it on the left hand side, I wasn't sure if my enemy would play units. And he also has a Huntress. Interesting indeed. But I did get the skeletons out, which helped clear the wave. And we have Safe Pilot walking straight up, but gets eliminated by the Harpies. We also have two Frost Mages, Skeleton Frost Mages, as I should say, walking up the right hand side. My Cobalt gets eliminated. We're going to drop the Safe Pilot. I think I timed it in time to eliminate that whole squad. Perfect right there. And she's going to walk over the bridge instead of going to the enemy tower. Now going for that tower really doesn't make as much sense as it used to in the last meta. I can't wait for this tower to be changed. However, the rocket towers is gonna make a massive difference overall. Hold that thought. I'm seeing a big contingent coming down. However, I do have Blizzard coming up, so I may end up using it here in a second just to eliminate that whole squad. And Baron Riven there is gonna be able to come in nice, but Merc Deep was actually on top there doing damage to Baron Riven there, so we didn't really get to clear it as we want. However, that Prowler gets it instantly. Now, back to the thought I was talking about was simply that when the tower changes, it's going to be nice to the rocket. However, what really is going to make a big difference to me is when we get the change to Arathi Basin, which I believe is the next rotation. And I'm excited for that. As, as I said before in some videos, Alteric Valley is not really my favorite. So we have the mages coming out. Another thing to note when you're going up against old Murkai, if by some happenings you're able to just eliminate Murkai once he comes out, then the enemy's entire push is eliminated, they can't do anything, and this Murkai build is useless. Very nice combo he has going out there with the Huntress. Me personally, which I've been asked is why I use Mountaineer. I just believe Mountaineer fits better as you get a little extra tank. Now don't get me wrong, Huntress is nice. However, it isn't able to take a lot of damage from people coming and doing melee range attacks to it. So as you can see, the safe pallet and the mages from my Necromancer making its way there. And Baby Shark is actually taking a lot of damage. He did summon his chickens, however. I don't really believe chickens works great in this meta. Unless you get that weird thing where you get the talent that allows him to put the crate on top of them. Other than that, I don't think chickens fit. And that's something that makes me so sad because I actually really love chickens early on in my Warcraft Rumble. So knowing we can't actually use it right now makes me a little sad. So we're going to drop Baron Riven there right here. He's probably have enough gold. Yes, he does. He has some resources so he can spawn some units, but it's not really going to be enough tide hunters that he needs for a push. Plus, I have Blizzard, which can easily eliminate them or simply use my hunters, as you can see here with my Necromancer and the Glaives are coming out. I dropped my skeletons to eliminate, and this is going to be the push right here that probably ends the game. Dropping my safe pile in the corner and he already used this chicken so he can't counter it and we have this mass contingent and I believe he does not have any spells available to him he's not really going to be able to do too much I'm right now really saving Blizzard for the simple fact that I want to know if he summons Murkai I'm just going to put it and crush his push instantly even though it's probably not going to make too much of a difference and the good thing is those harpies and stuff really don't do much damage and there he comes out with the huntress Ooh, is he going to clear it? He clears it. All right, but it's still a GG because I had my Blizzard saved. And here we go. Baby Shark, it's over. Good game, though. Now we're going to go into another round. I hope we get somebody new to face off against. Oh, it's another, another Murkai. And I love seeing Murkais in the game. I'm very happy about it. Hopefully soon we can probably fight maybe a Hogger or something. I'm not 100% sure what we'll get out now. I did use my safe pilot to collect that chest. The sad part about it is he did use his quill bar, so my poor safe pilot isn't really going to last. However, the Huntress gets a chance to eliminate the quill bar, and that's the enemy push basically right there. Great prowler as well. What's very sad is that his Merc guy really wasn't in his first hand probably, who knows, He was or he was trying to get the Huntress. So we have to get rid of this contingent right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place Baron River there, then I'm going to place Blizzard on top of them. It should be enough damage needed to eliminate them both. Perfect. Now I really don't have to worry about too much. Hopefully Baron River there can get to that Cobalt before he gets it. Ah, he gets the second gold. I was kind of hoping he wouldn't. This Murkai actually did a lot of damage early on to me, which I actually like using that secondary tower. I rarely use my secondary tower because I kind of stay with the same pushes and try to adapt as the game goes on. Now, the whole key to Warcraft Rumble, in my opinion, is knowing when to defend, 
attack and try your best to fight over resources if you lost the resource game and you're in a deficit you have to try to defend and try to turn around the goal to get resources and once you balance it out to a stable income of resources and pressure then you start to go in for the attack and end your opponent very rarely do i win matches where i send out minions on the enemy base and because i'm pressuring their base the enemy is forced to pull back which allows me to collect resources. It happens once in a while. You start with the hogger build. That is a massive group walking towards that enemy base right now. We may actually be able to end the game here. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, this is going to look really nice. As you can see here, I didn't even need to use my blizzard. They were able to eliminate it. I'm only adding the blizzard for the extra damage. The prowler comes in at the perfect moment, doing some nice damage to the enemy. And I feel really good right here, coming off a nice GG win. Also seeing this makes me really want to play Murkai next. So that's probably what I'm going to do. Make another Murkai video. I, I really enjoy that. That's what I play most of the time in Warcraft Rumble anyways. And we're going up against Karen Bloodhoof. I love Karen Bloodhoof for the simple fact that he does the AoE and he can run super fast. I haven't really had a build with him that I really enjoy yet. So I'm still working on that. He also has Wolf Rider and Wolf Rider is going to shred my Huntress as you can see there with the Bat Rider. Okay, so this is going to be a very interesting matchup. In my personal opinion, I think his current build is a very nice counter to the one I have. I just have to play very smart right here. My Necromancer, come on, shoot, shoot up, dude. Stop summoning, stop summoning. No, and that's something that does annoy me once in a while is the fact that if your Necromancer is after a certain time of not having minions has to summon them when he could just be attacking and if he was attacking then he would have been able to destroy the enemy. Now we are taking some damage on our base which is fine it's early in the game it doesn't really matter to me we're able to collect the chest we're going to drop the safe pallet in the left hand corner and we eliminate their bat because again we had enough health where we could sacrifice a little bit right here probably going to drop the skeletons as my tower is tanking that pyromancer so she won't eliminate them and we dropped the prowler just in case but what's good is even though we're getting pressured by the enemy we sent in that safe pallet which did a absurd amount of damage to the enemy base going to drop blizzard here i don't want to have to deal with that bat rider eliminating my skeleton that skeleton mage on the middle section is walking towards that chest uncontested and he collects it for our team which actually makes me very happy we're going to drop our necromancer here should be able to deal with that wolf rider and karen's coming up now they did not get our right hand tower which is good our second a tower is still alive the pilot comes in and that that actually doesn't work out too well but at least the necromancer takes the pilot with them we dropped our safe pilot hopefully it's enough there to eliminate that wolf rider actually that was a terrible move I'm not going to lie to you, that was actually a terrible move using that safe pilot there. I should have just kept them on the enemy base. We do have some units doing some damage. I think it's some mages or, yeah, it's probably some frost mages right there. We do have a lot of units keep being spawned from the secondary tower. Now, I could spend the time and take over that tower, but it's not worth it. I can basically defend this, no worries right now. So there comes in Baron River there with my frost mages using, oh, he uses his safe pilot. I was going to say I used my prowler to go get that chest, but that's okay. He's going to go in with the charge, eliminate that, and eliminate the Dark Spirit Troll. And again, this is why I chose the Prowler over the Quillbore for my personal build. And this is such a toxic build, guys. Remember that. If you're using this, hats off to you. I don't blame you. It can be a lot of fun to dominate your enemies. And obviously, there's a little better versions. You can tweak this build to your suit, to your style, to suit your style. Sorry. Wow, my English just broke up there. And the safe palette is the MVP for this round. As you can see, we almost have the enemy at zero health, and it's all thanks it's a safe pallet and the pressure that little mages keep doing right there. That one mage down the middle doing some nice damage. He does summon Karen, however. We're going to summoning the Prowler, and I was now about to say hopefully the chest spawn. So we're going to look to see for the Prowler to charge, and then we're going to summon these skeletons. Oh, no, you know what? That was a bad play. I didn't think about the Pyromancer. The Pyromancer did not come to mind, but that's fine. We're going to drop the safe pilot again. And you know what? If the safe pilot does enough damage, we could just blizzard the main base, which gives us the GG right there because we do have this mass contingent force. And I think that's what we're going to do. Karen's gone. So we're just going to GG it right here with the blizzard. And this is why sometimes having a spell is so convenient for your build.